Hello, and welcome to the Council tutorial for creating a virtual Superbill. We'll begin here in the Patient Visit screen. Now this is a visit where we've already seen the patient, we've taken the case history, we have entered the audiologic results, uh, as well as admittance results as, as appropriate, and now it's time for that patient to walk up to the front desk. And so the focus here for the provider is to very quickly determine the appropriate codes and to create the virtual Superbill. So the next step here would be to click on Auto Calculate Codes. This will cause counselor to look out across the entire patient encounter and say, all right, based on the case history plus the test results, what are the appropriate ICD-10 codes? And you can see this case, it came up with three, with the H90.3, as well as the tinnitus and noise exposure ICD-10 codes. Uh, it related to the specific test results that have been entered. It came up with three CPT codes, I'm sorry, two CPT codes, the 92557 and the 92567. This shows that counselor has the ability to determine whether a bundle code is appropriate versus a single code. So all of this is built in behind the scenes is being determined by simply clicking on auto calculate codes. Now there may be instances where you need to add or remove codes from this list. If you need to add, simply click on edit codes. It'll bring you to a screen where you can look up your code by either typing in any part of the description or the number of the code itself, okay? Uh, you can do the same thing, of course, for CPTs as well. If you need to remove any, just click the delete option off to the right and it'll be removed. Or of course, you can reshuffle these. So if the patient's primary concern was tinnitus, well then perhaps you want that at the top of the list, okay? Or to move it down either way. Uh, once you're comfortable with your IC10 and CPT codes, uh, then you can review the MIPS area. Now MIPS will not apply to everyone. Uh, it's only if you are submitting MIPS measures uh, counselor will take a look at the combination of the IC10 plus CPT codes and determine the appropriate MIPS measures. Uh, once again, if you do not submit MIPS, uh, you would skip this, right? You could simply just disable this and you wouldn't see it at all. Uh, but if you do uh, submit MIPS, uh, then counselor will say, okay, here are the appropriate measures. You can click set code and then you can see the list of available codes. In this case, I'll say that yes, we did collect the list of medications. I'll close that. We'll see the screen refresh. And there we go. And we could do the same thing now for uh, tobacco cessation. And we'll say this patient's a non-user. Okay, so once again, if you submit on MIPS, uh, it's a very quick process. And then from here, a counselor will get this information on the claim in the right way without you having to do any manual work to make that happen. Okay, uh, but we're gonna jump ahead here to the virtual super bill. Counselor takes the CPT codes that have been determined and will preset the super bill. So you can see here, we have our 92557 comprehensive audio. So counselor said, okay, let's add that to your super bill. Same thing goes for the TIMPs, right? We can click edit super bill and that will show us the details uh, within. So we can see what the price is, the quantity, the code, uh, very rare you'd change that, um, but you also can add modifiers, right? You could bring open the list of modifiers and select from there. You can also bring open uh, a guide um, uh, with all the descriptions of the modifiers. So if you need a quick review, you have that available as well. Now, beyond the uh, items that have been added via the CPT codes, right? Looking specifically at the test, re uh, test results that have been entered, uh, you also could add more to this super bill. The focus here is you can add anything you want at this point, right? Whether it's going to go through insurance or not. So let's say there's a case where the patient wanted a box of batteries. Great, let's go ahead and add that. Or they, um, you also did a clean and check on their devices, and so there's a $30 charge for that, whatever the case may be. Uh, you can simply just continue to add whatever is appropriate, uh, which relative to that uh, specific patient encounter, whether or not it's going through insurance or it's gonna be private pay. What happens here is you can see the first two items are checked off as being claimable, meaning that they'll go to the invoice and on through to the claim. Whereas the batteries are not checked as such, meaning that when they hit the invoice, they'll be recognized as private pay and would not continue forward to the claim. Okay, so once again, you can have a dynamic super bill that covers everything that happened during the patient encounter, whether or not it's going through to insurance. Okay. Once again, on the provider side, your goal was to get this reviewed and completed very quickly, and then we want to let the front desk know, or, or back, back desk know, for example. Uh, and there is the, the primary method of that would be to send a chat message up to the front desk, letting them know. So I'm going to go ahead there and click on the send chat message feature, and you can decide. Let's say in our case, Linda is up front. It'll automatically fill in a message saying super bill for TW has been completed, ready for invoicing, and you can add anything else that you want. So if you want to say something like uh, give box 312, 
great. You could also put something like one week fitting, you know, schedule one week fitting appointment, whatever it is that, that makes sense. As soon as you click main screen, a pop-up message would display for the recipient or recipients, letting them know this specific message. Okay. Within that pop-up, there are tools. They can click on it, and it will bring them right back to the screen where you were just working, so they can go ahead and create the invoice. And I'll show that in just a moment. But I also want to highlight that, of course, you can also create a task for someone related to um, related to this specific super bill. So if you wanted to, you could do the same thing with a task as we are doing here with the chat feature. It's also important to note that Calendar has a full tracking feature called the Life Cycle Summary that enables um, clinic administrators to see where each patient encounter is, like where if it stopped at a certain point. So uh, you may decide within your clinic that the proper workflow is that the provider gets the super bill completed and then someone else on staff uses the um, appointment lifecycle summary to see when it's completed and take it from there. Right? Uh, it would typically be done if these things are happening um, asynchronously, meaning the provider is creating the super bill now, but we're not creating the invoice until later. So the point being is chat messages work great, uh, typically for immediate. Task messages also work, uh, of course, for creating specific tasks for specific people. Or you can utilize the appointment um, lifecycle summary to kind of top level look down and see where any patient visit it, it has, it, it kind of still is at any given time um, and, and, and continue the work from there. It's also great for catching any misses. For example, as a provider, if I neglected to send a notice up to the front desk and this is sitting here as a super bill but not going anywhere, they, the appointment uh, lifecycle summary will help you detect that. Okay, so the point is there are different ways to proceed. The most common by far would be to use the chat message feature. I'm gonna send it to Linda. Linda will see the pop-up message. Uh, typically at this point, the patient would be standing in front of Linda. So she would click on the pop-up message and it brings her right back to this screen. Linda doesn't have to do any manual entry or looking things up. All she has to do in this case is say, actions and then new invoice and that will launch this process process forward to take all the decisions the provider just made in creating the super bill and will build the invoice all right now on the provider side of things once you've sent that chat message up to the front desk you are now completely done with the billing coding and reimbursement aspect of this encounter you can then go back to you know finish your professional report and send it out you can finish your chart note you can take the next patient you can go to lunch whatever is the next thing for you you are now completely done there's no paper involved there's no manual entry all that happens is linda sees the pop-up she clicks on it it brings her to the patient visit screen, she selects new invoice, that then launches the new invoice. What we'll see here is that it's now brought over all three of the items that the provider determined, right? The first two that will go in the claim and the third that will be private pay. And that's shown here as well on the payments tab. We can see how this is already broken out. So you can see from the front office perspective standpoint, once again, there's no paper, they're not re-entering anything. They're just moving this information, all the decisions the provider made, into an invoice and then all the other decisions for example diagnosis codes maybe MIPS codes all flows through to the claim and we'll review that further in the claims overview tutorial uh, but this key process of completing the super bill sets the stage very in a very significant way for any other team members to be able to move this information from the visit from the provider uh, into the invoice and into the claim wizard. So of course, please let us know if you have any questions. We're always happy to have to help. Give us a call, email us, live chat us. Uh, thank you very much for joining us for the creating a virtual Superbill tutorial.